in x-ray photoelectron spectroscopy the binding energy of electron and the kinetic energy of photoelectrons are very very important concepts if the binding energy is higher the kinetic energy is lower for example if the binding energy is 1000 the kinetic energy will be zero electron volt let's suppose this is oxygen atom and this is the nucleus so binding energy means that how these electrons are bound to the nucleus and this is we call binding energy here and how this electron is bound to the nucleus so this is this, this that electron also contain binding energy now when we shine x-ray of certain energy so the core electron escape from the sample and those electrons are basically called photoelectrons and this electron has kinetic energy this is the standard xps spectrum for lead elements this is the electronic configuration for lead elements we can see that these pore s electrons are located closer to the nucleus than the pore p pore d and four f's this is why this pore s has greater binding energy is compared to the pore p is compared to the four f is compared to the pore d this means that when electrons are located closer to the nucleus will have greater binding energy is compared to the electrons which located far away and another important thing is there are no peaks for these core electrons until 3d the fact is these electrons have very high binding energy we know that the photoelectrons only emit from a very very thin region so in this thin regions the photoelectrons encounter elastic scattering and we know that in elastic scattering no energy loss no energy loss so this means that this photon energy is distributed between the binding energy plus the kinetic energy of the photoelectron let's suppose that if the photon energy is 1000 electron volt and the binding energy is 900 electron volt so this means the kinetic energy of the photoelectron will be 100 electron volt this is the famous equation I just rearrange for the binding energy so in this equation this is the x-ray photon energy and it is constant here the work function is constant for spectrometer now let's suppose this kinetic energy is the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons detected by the XPS so let's suppose this is the kinetic energy detected by XPS detector so when we plug in all these values so we get the binding energy so this simply means that the binding energy is inversely proportional to the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons and vice versa in x-ray photoelectron spectroscopy the binding energy of electron and the kinetic energy of photoelectron play very very important role if the binding energy is higher the kinetic energy will be lesser and lesser let's suppose if the binding energy is thousand electron volt the kinetic energy will be zero electron volt this means that there is an inverse relationship between the binding energy and the kinetic energy very very important let's suppose this is basically the nucleus here this is oxygen atom so this binding energy means that how these electrons are bound to a nucleus this, there is an attractive force between the electron and the, the nucleus here so this is basically we call binding energy of this core electron similarly this electron is also bound to a nucleus and it has also certain binding energy similarly this electron is also bound to a nucleus this electron is also bound to a nucleus it has also certain binding energy now when we shine x-ray of certain energy so the core electron emits and this is basically we call photoelectrons and photoelectrons have some kinetic energy in this kind of kinetic energy is basically uh, talk about the photoelectron kinetic energy now let's suppose here this x-ray has energy of thousand electron volt let's suppose and it strike this uh, electron and this electron has binding energy also thousand electron volt so there will be zero kinetic energy because there will be no photoelectron this is why I written here if the binding energy is thousands so the kinetic energy will be zero now what we have to do we have to use greater than thousand electron photon energy so that we also overcome the binding energy and use the extra energy to the photo uh, electron that is basically reflect is 
the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. I also asked this question in the community post that why kinetic energy and binding energy are inversely related. So this answer is very clear and this is also clear. But this is very important that it is because of the conservation of energy. So all answers were correct and most of the respondents correct the answer. Now look here, this is the famous equations. So this is the photon energy X resource. This is the constant energy. So this energy has to distribute between the binding energy and the kinetic energy. So let's suppose this is 1000 here. So if the binding energy is 1000, so th there will be no photoelectrons. So now if the binding energy is 700 electron volt, so this kinetic energy will be 300. The photoelectron kinetic energy will be 300. So th there is an inverse relationship between the, uh, the binding energy and the uh, kinetic energy. Let's consider the case of lead here. This is the electronic configuration of lead. So we know that these are basically the OJ electron peaks and these all are basically the photoelectron peaks. So we know that uh, when the electrons are close to the nucleus, it will have greater binding energy. So look here, these electrons are not appearing in the XPS spectra here. So it starts from here, from the pore S. So this means that pore S is uh, close to the nucleus is compared to the pore P is compared to the pore D. So the pore S has the greater binding energy here. This is almost 900 electron volt. You see here, now pore P is far from pore S from the nucleus here. So this means that uh, it has less binding energy and now let's go to the pore D. Pore D is more far from pore S. So this has very less energy and look at 4F here, 4F is here. It is far from the nucleus. So it will have very, very less binding energy here. You see here, this is very clear now that if this is the nucleus here, if electron is closer, greater binding energy, greater binding energy. If electron is far away, so it will have less binding energy, less binding energy. This is now confirmed here. Now the important question is here that why these electrons are not appearing in this lead uh, survey spectra. The answer is very, very simple. These electrons have very, very high binding energy. And we have the source here, this range. So this range is not sufficient to give us uh, the photo electrons from this core electron. This is why we do not have these peaks here. Now, when we want to draw here the, uh, the, the kinetic energy graph here, this is the binding energy. I know it increases toward the left here, toward the left. So the binding, the kinetic energy will be increases toward the uh, right here. You see here, this is the kinetic energy uh, relation here. This means that uh, uh, this 4F uh, orbital electrons will have the highest kinetic energy. Not this one, but uh, yeah, there, there is also 5D. So the 5D will be have the highest uh, kinetic energy and it will have the lowest binding energy. This will be right here. This one here will have lowest binding energy. This 5D and, and higher kinetic energy, right? In XPS analysis, we use two type of X resources. One is magnesium, another is aluminum here. And we know that most of the detectable elements have binding energy or photoelectron peaks or OJ peaks below 1200 electron volts. So it means that these X resources are sufficient to generate photoelectrons. Now we know that the photoelectrons only escape from very very thin region and we know because of this elastic scattering in this case in this very thick region when photoelectrons created it lost its energy because of inelastic collision electron from this region basically these electron detect by the XPS detector but it contribute to the background of the peak here the only electron which contribute to the XPS peaks are basically originated from this thin region from 10 nanometer and here these electrons basically do are uh, performing elastic scattering and we know that in elastic scattering no loss of energy no loss of energy this is why this x-ray energy is basically distributed between the binding energy and the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons this is the most important part of this video energy conservations because we know that the photoelectron process is elastic scattering so the total energy remains conserved so basically this photon energy is distributed between the binding energy 
and the kinetic energy of the photo electrons here so we know that this photo this this electron has also binding energy here this electron has also binding energy and it is lesser than this electron here so this means that this photo electron will have higher binding energy and less kinetic energy because this photon energy has to distribute it between the binding energy and the kinetic energy here so when the binding energy is higher let's suppose this is thousand here if the binding energy is thousand here we will have no photo electron zero energy so the same photon energy so if it is 800 here so this will be 200 here the photo electron energy will be 200 here so simply means that this electron has less binding energy and higher kinetic energy the high kinetic energy is greater the binding energy is less is compared to this electron or this electron or this electron or this electron lastly let's prove it from the table this is the famous equation i rearrange for the binding energy so we know that this is photon energy it is constant here this is aluminium source constant and this is the work function for spectrometer it is also constant here this kinetic energy is detected by the xps detector this is basically the kinetic energy of the photo electrons let's suppose here that the photo electron kinetic energy is this much so when we plug in all these three value here so we will get bind binding energy this much so when we decrease this kinetic energy here so this equations give us increase in bind binding energy so this is why we have inversely relationship between the binding energy and kinetic energy please subscribe my channel